Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Tawahado Bible Study Podcast. All right, my beloved brethren and sistren, we have now reached the scroll of the apocalypse, the scroll of uncovering, the scroll of Revelation, chapter 18. If you want to support this venture, head over to aksum.substack.com or to patreon.com slash tawahedo. Verses 1 to 3, and as always, we are in the KJV. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. First, we note that Babylon is falling. In fact, we hear it twice here. The kings representing power and the merchants representing wealth have become bedfellows with this fallen city, with Babylon. We can call them Babylonian bedfellows, and that is not a good thing. As always, Babylon is functional. We take the example of Holy Peter, who attributed Rome with this title or appellation of Babylon. And so we too, when we see that the shoe fits, must put it on in regards to a crumbling city-state, a falling empire in its last throes. We see the usage of the spirit here, a reminder that in biblical Greek and in Hebrew, the word spirit is also the word for wind. This is also true of non-biblical Semitic languages, such as Ge'ez and Abharic. We have uh, Manfas and Nafas there for those who are interested. And so this connection exists because there is a movement going on with both of those things. And so foul behavior is associated and attributed to this foul spirit or this foul wind. It's uh, not just, you know, a spooky ghost like Casper um, or his uncles to come and haunt you, but it is a movement towards teachings that are strange and unauthorized by God. Verses 4 to 8. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. We see here the haughtiness, the insolence, the arrogance, the belief that this city, which is represented by the feminine, represented here with an illustration, a mashal, an, uh, an example of a woman, is too cocky. And the cocky will fall. They will crumble. So do not be lured in by the twin sirens of power and wealth that will turn you into a cocky queen like Babylon. Every situation changes. Every empire and city-state eventually crumbles, except for the one established by God alone with no human-made walls and no human-made anything, but only God-made items. And that is Mount Zion. That is the heavenly Jerusalem. So when situations change, we should acknowledge that they are out of our control, similar to the serenity prayer. Go on your favorite search engine, be it Google or DuckDuckGo, and search for the serenity prayer. I think it's a good one, although I do prefer the Psalms and, and the Lord's Prayer. 
And woe to any of us when we do not act accordingly to changing situations, when we do not act as if there is judgment. For even the greatest of city-states, the greatest of empires will be judged by the Lord God. Verses 9 through 20. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. This is an amazing passage. There is so much repetition. And as I often say, and as many of the other members of the Ephesus school say, the repetition here is to emphasize the point. The point being made is that their reign, their rule, their wickedness, their power, their wealth, which was given so many different synonyms and parallels that if it was written in 2021, would probably include Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and Doggy Coin, or Doge, if you want to call it like that. This is the reverse of the Beatitudes as we find them in the gospel according to Matthew or in the gospel according to Luke. In Matthew and in Luke, weeping becomes laughing. Here we have the repetition of weeping and wailing as an after effect, as a result, as a consequence of leaning into wealth and power too much. Woe to the fornicators. Woe to the luxury livers, uh, because they will be weeping, <laughs> they will be wailing, and God is the avenger. You don't have to wait for some messianic warrior to defeat Babylon or to defeat Rome, because God is the avenger. God will defeat Babylon. God will defeat Rome. God will defeat the United States or anyone or any nation that stands against him, period. 21 to the end. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, 
For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. This is another great passage. So beginning in verse 20, we hear that God and those that are with God will rejoice. This is the encouragement that Holy John is giving to the Christians in the time of the martyrs. He's saying God will rejoice, the enemies of God will weep and wail. And so then through uh, 21, through the end, he details that the man-made instruments, the arts and the crafts, all of these forms of rejoicing and joy having and glee and happiness will be utterly destroyed by the judgment of God. Remember, God said he wouldn't flood the earth again, but he didn't say he wouldn't judge the earth. And he didn't say that he wouldn't use ma'im or the water, which the Israelites feared so deeply for that very judgment. Glory be to him who judges all those who have ever lived and all those who will die.